uh, by Don Nero, scaling the Ansible community to new heights. Good luck. I'm pleased to be talking to you today about some of the work we've been doing on the Ansible community team to basically help grow and strengthen and sustain the Ansible community. And um, I'm going to start out with some intros of our team and some of the things we're going to talk about today. Um, by the way, the slides are in the, um, they're linked in the schedule. So if you want to grab them there, um, you can find them. So the Ansible community team at Red Hat, we are all um, kind of funded positions to work with the Ansible community. And I thought it'd be great to introduce some of the people that do some of the work that I'm going to talk about today. Um, so there's Andre. Um, he works a lot with collections. He's been doing some great work with um, execution environments and um, doing a lot there. there. There's Carol, who is really kind of She's almost like the engine of the team. Like we, we'd be nothing without Carol. Carol does like amazing outreach, organizing events, and is just kind of almost like our spiritual guy. Um, there's Anwisha, who's the release manager for the community releases, and she also does great outre outreach. Um, she's very active there, um, and just all kinds of things. Then there's me. I just, I don't know. Sometimes I just try and make it look like I do stuff. Um, carrying on, there's, there's eight of us in total. There's Greg, who's the uh, team lead and ar community architect. Um, just unbelievable insights and experience from Greg. And uh, really, he's 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 awesome dude. There's uh, Sandra, um, who's the docs lead. and. She's also kind of like a um, project manager for us and like helps keep us on track with a lot of things. Um, Leo from um, Argentina, who does like a lot of um, also outreach. He's working on labs and um, he gets involved in um, some of the schools with Red Hat ambassadors. I'll tell you a bit more about that. Um, and also Walter. Walter is, um, he's, he's kind of, He's kind of the guy that helps us interface with Red Hat a little bit. Um, and he advocates for us and he helps make sure that like we have, and when I say we, the entire Ansible community, um, have the direction and support that we need from Red Hat to succeed. Um, it's really a critical role there. Um, so one of the things I'm gonna start talking about, this is all about like work that we've done in the past year to help um, build and grow the community. And one of the things, like if you go to Ansible.com today, you'd notice that there's a lot of Red Hat focused content um, that's you know, about the platform and products that Red Hat sells. And there's not a terrible lot for the community. And it exists, there's a community page. Um, but what's been missing um, is a the central place, like where can the Ansible community come online and have discussions. And I think like one of the things we've been dealing with in the community is a lot of fragmentation. Um, and this comes in like different ways like Ansible.com, um, but also discussions. There are things that happen in GitHub issues, GitHub discussions, and there's lots of, there's lots of decisions and, you know, chats that happen in these various places and without having a central space, it, it's hard to kind of have a view into everything that's going on. It also makes it extremely difficult to know when a community decision happened to have like a historical record. When you get several years kind of down the line from a decision and it's like, well, how did this come to be? And you kind of, you know, you lose that record. That's an important thing for the community to have. So we've been building a community website. Um, again, the links are in here. Um, we've got some fantastic help from the Fedora community. Um, this is places where things have come together. Mo, who's here, has graciously given us some great advice to help us get started. Um, also, like Michael Scherer, like gave some great tips. We were choosing a static site generator, and you know he's 
like look, static site generators come and go. We've had to rebuild things in the Fedora community a couple of times. So what's important is, you know, you like kind of like abstract the content away from that and, you know, choose tools that the community uses and meet them where they work. Um, so, you know, we've going actually with Nicola, which is built in Python and uses Jinja templates and, you know, it's all familiar tools and tech um, for the Ansible folks. So um, building a, this is the wireframe, but if you go to our repo, you can see the work in progress. It's deployed to GitHub pages. You can join us on Matrix if you want to get involved. Um, we're going to start building out the um, kind of the final thing based on wireframes that we've got. Um, and this will like serve as that central point for the community in the web where you can like get access and know where to go and um, kind of have a home on the internet. Um, along with this, we're launching a community forum discourse. Greg, again, has been spearheading this. He's, I think he's wanted this for years, like four or five years at this point, and coming together. And again, in kind of collaboration and cooperation with the Fedora community, um, and like working with CDCK, um, we will have a place where you know, community discussions can take place and where we can have those, you know, records, historical records of decisions and like have a lot of the discussions and community topics and votes that go on. They use, they use GitHub, which is kind of, it works, but it's a little awkward sometimes and like kind of the flow for like having a vote and then closing a vote and like closing the discussion can, and just be a little awkward. Um, and it can be difficult for new people to get involved with that. So obviously the, the having, having a central forum and a place to discuss all things um, in the Ansible community, it's gonna be great. And that's coming real soon. So um, stay tuned. So another big part of the Ansible community and the team and the work that we do are um, meetups and events and all the outreach that goes into it. And um, we've Ansible community days. Um, there have been a couple already this year. There's going to be one in Berlin soon. Um, the community days are just, it's a time for everyone in the community, whether you're, you know, just individual contributor or not, if you're just a user, if you're an enthusiast, or even if you're a Red Hat customer, you can come along and, you know, talk about Ansible, learn, share, and it's a place for everyone to get together. The Contributor Summit is more an opportunity, I think, for contributors to come and talk to um, Red Hat teams and, you know, work with Red Hat engineering to, um, you know, find new solutions and all that good stuff. Um, some upcoming meetup and, and events. Um, I already mentioned the community day, but there's, you know, there's stuff that's going on all over the place. Um, DjangoCon should be really cool too. Um, one of the things that I mentioned, Ann Weisha, um, she has created a meetup organizers toolkit. And this is to facilitate like the community to like, with a set of resources that will help you plan and carry out Ansible meetups successfully. Um, it's available here, and it's also something that would benefit the Fedora community. We kind of want to share this because it's broadly generic um, for anyone who wants to organize a community meetup. Um, but this is something that, like, and we should notice that, like, hey, we need this. You know, people are trying to organize meetups, and it's not always going so well because they don't, you know, they might be new, they don't know how to do it. So hopefully, this will facilitate a lot more in-person interactions. Um, Leo, as I mentioned early, earlier, um, this, is, this is him um, at a um, university in Buenos Aires, and he's going in and working with Red Hat ambassadors to reach out to students, and, you know, Ansible is this great starting point for open source, and it's, you know, if you want to be a Python programmer, or if you just, like, if you're interested in, like, sysadmin, kind of like DevOps, there's something for everyone with Ansible, so getting into universities is something that Leo's just started, but it's really great work. It's, you know, um, so community releases. How many, just quick show of hands, because I'm doing a lot of talking, I kind of see people out there. I, I, I want to get a bit of interaction. I like some conversation. How many 
have, how many of you have downloaded um, Ansible from PyPy? You pip install Ansible? Really? Okay, okay, there we go. There, I'm sure some people on, you know, in, in, in the virtual audience have. Well, um, so that's, you know, that's the community release and that involves Ansible core, bunch of Ansible, Ansible tools, um, like, you know, for running playbooks as well as community collections. Um, and that release process um, has been handled by Anwisha Das, um, since seven um, RC1, um, she started, she was the shadow release manager, now she's the release manager. She's been doing great work um, with those uploads and building and making them available to the community. And of course, we've had some help from friends along the way, like um, Christian and Sandra and the steering committee. Um, also, one of the things that it's this year this team has been doing is trying to open up more and give back to the community and like give them the um, ownership of some of these processes and like making sure that they not only have visibility but they can participate and they can like drive this and it doesn't have to be it doesn't have to come from someone who's a red hatter and you know the processes shouldn't be behind um, you know red hat firewalls or you know whatever and Anwish she's been documenting this process with the steering committee and she's also been like automating a lot of it like through GitHub actions and you know different workflows so that it's um, it'll be easier for people from the community to get in and you know handle that handle that process. One of the things I've been working on um, is what's become known as the docs lift and shift and um, this is we kind of had this point where we were trying to get like all these community doc initiatives going, like you know, creating new content, revamping stuff and restructuring. We restructured the user guide that was just this big honk and chunk of all these different topics and like being able to retrieve and find information within that was, you know, a lot of work. So we decided to like kind of break things up. So we're doing things like that to improve the doc and to get more contributors and through the documentation. And one of the things that we found was that some of the people in the core team, we, we were just kind of getting in a, each other's way a little bit, like, you know, with their sanity tests and some of the things that the core team, some of the needs that they had didn't exactly align with what the community needed. And there's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of, there's all the documentation for, you know, kind of the end user documentation, but also collections and stuff like that, and like stuff that's owned by the Ansible community and the steering committee. So we've created a separate, separate documentation project, and that's been a little controversial because some people think that like documentation should always belong in the same repository as the code and the thing that it's documenting, and that kind of docs as code approach, which I adhere to myself. But we just kind of got to the point where it just made sense to create a separate documentation project so we can really accelerate some of those efforts. And it's, so far it's been really successful. We've seen a lot of community engagement with that. Um, and so that's, that's been great. We've been adding like new workflows and doing all kinds of fun stuff there. Um, another thing that I've been working on is revamping the Ansible doc site. Um, so the doc site, just to quickly kind of disambiguate the term that I'm using here, this is just like a set of like static HTML pages. It's kind of the landing page when you go to docs.ansible.com and you kind of navigate around. It's those top level HTML pages that are in front of the actual documentation once you drill down. So it's the main entry point for most new Ansible users. And at the start of the year, this is a snapshot kind of Actually, when I joined, I'm still fairly new to Ansible myself. Um, and around like May 7th last year, there were these big kind of cards that took up all this real estate and they were focused more on, you know, there's community, then there's the platform, the downstream offering, and then there was some core stuff. So it was more focused on kind of like the tools and not really taking the user's perspective too much. So we decided to, um, create a more user journey, user-centric um, approach. And to start doing that, um, 
we started identifying personas. And you know, persona is just a representation of the user or the person who's looking at the content. Um, and we defined a few. You can find them there here in Markdown, um, which we put everything in Markdown in the open so it's in plain text and it's there for contributors to look at and it's not in like some kind of like slide or you know whatever. But we focused on the needs, the attitude, and the knowledge of the personas as well. We identified them, and then we said, like, you know, what do they need? What's the type of content? What's the attitude? You know, the attitude helps you determine the level of verbosity. Um, you know, say like a like a Python programmer is going to want like all the programmatic options and their expected behavior. But if it's like an SRE somewhere, they just, you know, show me like when the red light's flashing, show me remediation. Um, and then the knowledge also helps you tune in more and like meet the needs because you know a hobbyist is going to have a different set of knowledge than say like a solutions architect. So once we had our personas, um, we decided to like like what do we do with those? What's the next step? Well, I said I was new to Ansible, and I came over from uh, JBoss. I've spent like a lot of my career in middleware. Um, for my sins in a past life, I think. But um, yeah, I was, was like really super familiar with Kubernetes and there's this, you know, this, this for me is like the, you know, the, the Kubernetes journey. Um, and it seemed like a very like sort of abstract kind of, you know, this could be applied, like these, these different milestones could be applied to most like projects with technology. You know, someone starts out, they become aware, then they evaluate, then they adopt, and they start using, then you scale out. So these milestones describe these progressions that you would kind of go through. And um, we decided to you know, start with human motivation is the first thing. And um, we started mapping out like these, the, the, the journeys against those milestones for each of the personas. Um, again, we've got those in Markdown. You can check them out there if you want to find out a bit more. Um, and once we had the persona journeys mapped out, like where they're each step to 10 minutes left. I, <laughs> is that 10 minutes? Sorry, just so I'm clear. Did... You're going to start or a quarter past. Quarter past. Like 10 minutes. Uh, yeah, 10 minutes, minutes roughly. Would be we're good. Okay, yeah. I, I, I'll, I've got like 40 slides here I've been practicing, so I'll try it. I, I think 10 minutes would be good. But hopefully you guys are into this anyway, and it's, we're having a, we're having a, everybody's having a good time. But you've got the milestones and then the steps underneath them to complete them. And so we thought like, so we've got these things, and we're going to like build the new doc site based on these. So when somebody comes in, they're not going to say like, oh, here's you know, um, community docs or here's platform. You're going to see the, the entry point and like, you're going to see these journeys. How do you do something um, with Ansible? So once we had those things, we decided to make things available to the community. Again, we're trying to use tools and tech that the community is familiar with. I created um, this Jinja doc site. Naming things is actually one of the hardest things to do in tech, and I still kind of hate the name of that repo, but it's going to go away. But yeah, the Jinja doc site. Um, and you know, we st when we started building the new doc site, you know, making sure the community get to it was was vital. Um, and this is actually the first thing that I came up with. I went wild, I went bold at first. And you know, part of the, part of the idea there goes back to Cunningham's Law. Um, we wanted to get feedback from the community. And if we release, like, oh, here, here's this great, like, really high polished site. And everyone's, yeah, it's great. But we wanted to hear, we were, you know, we're building this for the community. And so intentionally putting some things in there that didn't really fit and, like, kind of like bold colors, and it seemed to work. We got a lot of really good feedback. Sandra, who I mentioned before, the docs lead, was fantastic. And going out to the community and finding out what pe she hit Reddit, like Matrix, we have this docs meeting, and she just, she really, you can see her here, um, you know, but we, we got a lot of feedback. A lot of it was like super critical. A lot of it was like, yeah, this isn't so good, but we kept going. 
Um, you know, we gathered feedback through the Bullhorn newsletter, reiterated quickly over it, and over time we got more, and you know, we start, things started to trend more positively. Um, and then we released our, you know, journey-based doc site. So if you go to docs.ansible.com now, um, you'll see there's, you know, like each of those kind of like milestones and then, you know, the steps you need that are direct links to the documentation. So you just get in and you find where you're going much quicker and it's more mapped to actual things that you're doing and your tasks. It's not mapped to like a product or a tool or something. But yeah, so this is what we, and you, you'll see there, there, there are sections for each of the personas that we identified. Um, so that's some work that we've been doing. Um, along with that, we've, you know, we, we've actually done a lot with the documentation in the past year. Um, one of the things that I noticed, particularly when I was join, joining and trying to like navigate around, was like, there are all the, there's this whole ecosystem of all these projects in Ansible, and it was very, you know, they were all like, you know, some of them were hosted on Netlify, some on Read the Docs, and some of them, there were even like third party, kind of like forks of documentation, or like, like mirrors that were on Read the Docs, so you couldn't trust anything from like just looking at the URL or looking at, it's, is this Ansible, or is this like this third party thing, which, you know, it, 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 it's fine, but you know, it's, it's hard to know if it's, I guess, official or whatever. And you know, there's like Markdown and like some repos. So you get the idea, there's docs all over the place, but it's hard to know what is Ansible community and what is not and what can I trust? And it all looks different. So, um, one of the things we, we've done recently is um, we got the Ansible namespace and read the docs and we put all the Ansible projects under that namespace. So now it's like a consistent URL. Um, and if you go to the Ansible read the docs, you can see all the projects that are in the ecosystem. We have like, you know, deterministic URLs and there's also um, community themes that we've been applying so you get a consistent look and feel while you're browsing the documentation. And this really helps to kind of build trust with the community um, and create a, you know, this cohesive identity. Um, we've also been working on removing barriers to entry and making sure that um, community users can, can get in with Ansible and start, you know, get up and running like, quickly. You know, again, it's something like coming from like the JBoss world of, you know, go in and like the first thing you see is like a hello world. And when I joined, it was like, I went to Ansible, docs.ansible.com and it's like, where is that? How do, I, how do I start using Ansible? And there's like a link to a quick start video that went to a Red Hat site and the video didn't load. And then there was another link that took me back to docs.ansible. So there's this loop. And I, I remember spending about like 10 minutes just trying to answer the questions like, what is Ansible and how do I just even use it? Um, so, you know, even starting um, quick start guides and getting started, Andre um, on our team has done a fantastic job and he's, you know, execution environments, which it's just basically it's like a container image that kind of acts as the control node. Um, and this is something that we noticed was causing confusion for the community and like a lot of people didn't even know like what an execution environment is and it's this thing that gets talked about a lot more kind of downstream than in the community even though it should be available to the community. So we've been working on that as one of kind of our points to fix and make it easier for um, community users to get in and start using stuff quickly. Also, um, Leo has been working on community workshops. Um, you can find a couple there. They're a little bit out of date, and there's a Red Hat one that is kind of mixed with AAP stuff, which is, it's, it's, it's all good to learn from, but it's not quite Ansible community, and we've got some new stuff that's um, coming up with Instruct Labs um, based on like new community users is one of the main personas, and then like more advanced users. Um, so real soon we'll have we'll have 
a whole set of workshops that you can go online and, you know, it's self-paced. Um, now, that's kind of a whirlwind tour of all the stuff we've been doing. Um, one of the things that I wanted to do when I came to Flock, and this is actually my first Flock, but I've been a Fedora user for years now, and um, I've been having conversations and you know trying to talk to people and like how can we get Ansible, the Ansible community and the Fedora community to, you know, come together. And we've learned so much from the Fedora community already, um, and we want more of that. You know, I think I think like the um, toolkits that we've been working on would be great to have you know, Fedora community users using them and, you know, e even stuff like, you know, Ansible tests should, you know, run on Fedora. And I was talking with Kevin about, you know, all the, all the Fedora infrastructure uses Ansible and, you know, maybe we can help there to update some of the syntax and, you know, find some ways to improve it. So this is a direct call to the Fedora community and, you know, just saying let's, <laughs> yeah, let's hang out, you know, why not? Um, and w as always, we're totally open. Please come and join us. Um, you can find us on Matrix. You can find us on Mastodon. Um, you can subscribe to the Bullhorn newsletter if you want to get um, all the info about it, what's going on in the Ansible community. And you can also, you know, you're welcome to come share your news and add to the Bullhorn. Um, the Ansible Community Weekly Meetings every Wednesday. Um, there's lots of special interest groups. I mentioned docs. I know there are a couple of documentation people in the room, some tech writers. Please come and join us. There's tons of work. And if you're looking to get involved in open source or if you're like really experienced and, but you don't know Ansible that much and you'd like to, come hang out with us. We're on Matrix. We're your friends. <laughs> Thank you. Any questions or anything? Do we have time for that? Time, but I think it's lunch, so we can take one or two questions here. If anybody has. Well, you know where to find us if 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 you do have questions. Um, thank you. Thank so you very much. much. Thank Thanks you. So. We break for lunch now. Thanks, everyone.